Come in. Hi, my name is Rachel Ellis and I'm gonna be your student nurse today. And uh, could I please uh, take a look at your armband and could you state your name and date of birth for me? Uh, my name is Shirley Gibbons. My birthday is May 5th, 1964. Perfect. So um, they told me, and I'm gonna, let me wash my hands real quick. They told me that you had complained of pain. Can you tell me on a scale of zero to 10 what your pain level is? Um, it's an eight. An eight, okay, that's pretty, 10 being the worst and zero nine, that's pretty heavy. So the doctor has ordered you uh, some morphine uh, as an injection. Can you tell me your allergies, please? Um, yes, I'm allergic to codeine and sulfa and also latex. Okay, so morphine will not interfere with that. So we're going to get that for you, and uh, I'm going to um, uh, get the medicine and get it prepared, and then I'll be back to give it to you. Uh, now, so we're going to give it IM, and let me just talk about that a minute before I go and get your medicine. So IM, we have three major sites that we give IM with. And it can be, uh, de depends on your size, depends on the size of the muscle, depends on um, the volume of the medication and also the viscosity of the medication, how thick is it. So one of the places we can give is the deltoid. The deltoid is in your arm and you haven't had a mastectomy or you don't have a, um, a, a AV shunt, do you, for dialysis? No. Oh. Okay, good. So uh, there's one place we can give it, uh, which is in the arm in the deltoid muscle, and that one we usually don't go over one, about one to one and a half mLs in the volume. And usually if it's a real thick medicine, we're not gonna give it there anyway, but we're gonna find the acromion process up here, and then we're gonna put two to three fingers, depending on the size of the patient, and then that third finger I'm gonna bring down in the middle of the arm, which is the deltoid muscle, and that's where we're gonna give your injection, or can give it, and we give it at a 90 degree angle with at least a one inch needle. Now, when we get into some other sites, we might need a longer needle, depending on the patient's size. Okay, another site is called the vastus lateralis, and this is hard to get him straight. All right, so the next site that we can also give an IM injection in is in the vastus lateralis, and that's a good size muscle on most people. Some folks have little tiny legs, so that might not work. But with to find the sites, you must find the lateral femoral condyle, and it's just above the knee here, and you're, you look at it right there, and then your greater trochanter up here in the thigh area near the uh, fem femoral artery, but on the outside. And some people will tell you to do two hands and then in the middle, but however, if their leg is real big or real small, that won't be an accurate measurement. So you wanna find your sites here, and then you wanna divide the uh, thigh vertically first because you're gonna go in the lateral aspect of the thigh, and then you're gonna divide it into three parts. And the middle third on the lateral aspect is where you would give your IM injection, okay? At a 90 degree angle. Uh, with a one inch or two inch needle, depending on the size of their thigh. If they have a big old, great big thigh, you might have to have a little longer needle, okay? So the third site that we can give an IM injection will be the ventral gluteal, a little bit more difficult than the other two sites. And so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna take the palm of your hand and that, you're gonna place that on the patient's greater trochanter, which is here on the thigh, like up there, that little bony part that sticks out. And then you're gonna take your pointer finger and you're going to let the top of the you're going to let your finger touch the uh, anterior iliac spine and then your middle finger and it's going to form a v when you do it's going to touch the iliac crest and then you would give your im injection in the ventral gluteal muscle in between the y just be careful don't stick yourself also you want to use the opposite hand of the side of the patient you're on so i'm on the patient's right side so i'm using my left hand and in order to keep that straight and correct, make sure your thumb is always pointing inward and that way you know you're using the correct hand and find the right landmarks. In this site, and also the vastus lateralis, you can give up to two mLs. Now your book has an error in it, so go by with what we're saying. But two mLs, some people, if they're real, real big, you might could give three, but I personally don't like to do that. If I'm going over two, I'm gonna give two injections in two different sites. Okay, that's it. 
Okay, Ms. Gibbons, what we're gonna do is I'm going to get your morphine. First thing I need to do though, is I need to uh, make sure you're not too drowsy and already got your pain level, which is an eight. So we're gonna get that for you. And then I also need to make sure, uh, have you been having any constipation? No, um, okay. No but problem. if you do, let me, let me know, okay? And then also I need to um, count your respirations and your pulse, and so let me do that real quick. Because the big thing with morphine is that we can't give it to you if your respirations are too slow, below 10 to 12, okay? So, because it can slow your respirations down. But we, I can see you're breathing a little fast, so uh, you, and you're in pain, so we need to give you your medication, okay? All right. I'm gonna draw up the morphine. And the first check I'm gonna do is I'm going to check the name, I've got the orders in front of me and I'm gonna check the name of the medication and the concentration because morphine does come in different concentrations. So this is the concentration I want and the order is for, let me see, it is for morphine four milligrams. This particular vial has 10 milligrams per ml. So that means there's 10 milligrams in one ml. So I've got to do some math and I'm going to figure up I need to give 0 0.4 milligrams to get my um, uh, 0 0.4 mLs to get my four milligrams from this concentration. So I need a needle that is tw at least a 23 gauge by one inch. Once again, if it's a very obese patient, I'm gonna get a longer needle. This needle, the one inch is the length, the 23 is the gauge, and the gauge have, comes in different sizes. You want a bigger gauge if you've got a thicker medicine. Uh, you use a small gauge like we did with the uh, uh, sub-Q insulin when we're gonna be given real frequent uh, injections and also because we're just going in the subcutaneous tissue, but this one we're going in the muscle. So we, a 23 one is your most common size. And then I'm going to need a 3 ml syringe, which is the size that it's going to fit this because I'm only going to give uh, 4 tenths of an ml from this vial, particular vial. Generally though, with morphine, in, when you're in the clinical setting, you're going to have a, a more accurate, um, a closer, different concentrations, and you want to get one that's close to your 4 actually, and I do, think it does come in 4 milligrams per ml, so you'd want to choose that one. But all I have is this one, so this is what I'm going to drop. So I'm looking at that now, I'm checking it against the orders, and then I'm going to check it one last time when I get to the bedside, just before I give it. So I'm going to clean my vial because this vial has been used. I want to clean this stopper to make sure it's clean because I don't want to get any bacteria there and let it kind of dry. And then, it, sometimes your syringe and needles will come in one package. And most of the time they do, but if they don't, you get your syringe. This part up here is called um, the, um, this is called the hub. And you don't want to be touching the hub end. The only part you want to touch is the outside and your little uh, phalanges here and your um, uh, plunger, okay? And that controls up and down to get your dose. And then, when you take that out, make sure you don't let that touch anything. You want to keep this as aseptic as possible. It's called medical asepsis. Okay, let me get this open. And of course, it doesn't open. <sighs> okay, I'm getting everybody tickled. All right, when you open this, make sure you open it where you don't touch the colored part. That is the hub of this, ne this needle. So I'm gonna put it on the syringe and give it a little twist. Don't twist it too hard or you'll break your plastic. If you break your plastic on either end of this, then it'll leak and it won't work. So just give it a little twist where it's snug. And then I'm through with that. And this pink part is what we call our needle guard. This is what we'll use in a, just a couple of minutes to uh, protect ourselves from a needle stick once we're, uh, we've completed the injection. So we're gonna pull that down out of our way. This is your cap, and I've already cleaned my vial. And so I'm going to take this off, try not to twist this cap when you pull it off. And you noticed how I pulled it out like this, because I don't wanna stick myself. If you do it this way, this way, if you pull it off like this, I'm too close to that needle and clumsy me, I'm gonna stick myself. So. Just in demonstration here, I pull this out and lay it down. And then I'm gonna lay it down just like this on its side. And then I'm, I've got a vial here, so I've got to pull up the air again. If it's a, if it's not, if it's a, a 
if it's an ampule, that would be different, and we'll show you that later. But in a vial, uh, we got to put air in. So I'm going to put in four tenths of an ml of air, and then I'm going to turn it right side up and make sure the bevel of my needle and get to where I can see the needle end and the medicine, and I'm going to pull up. I'm probably gonna pull up a little bit more, withdraw more, because now I'm just using one medicine, so it doesn't matter if I inject some back into the vial, as long as I don't take my needle out. And I'm gonna go up here to four tenths, and where I wanna measure from is, once again, the top rim of this black part of the plunger, not the bullet part, not the pointed part, and not the bottom rim, but the top rim is gonna be right on 0.4. Each one of these little lines is a tenth, okay? And so there I have it. And then, to get, go over to my bedside, I'm gonna have my cap here, and I'm gonna take something um, solid, and I'm gonna use a, what we call a one-handed scoop method to cover this needle back up, because I don't want it to touch anything when I'm going down the hall or get contaminated or when I'm going across the hall or whatever. And I pick it up like that, it's not snapped on yet, but at this point in time, I can snap it on and secure it. And so now I'm ready to go into the patient's room and give them an injection. So what I want to do here now is I'm going to use it on the pad, and this is uh, only four-tenths of an ml, so I can give it in their deltoid, and I'd give it at a 90-degree angle. So I'm going to wipe the site, okay? Oh, the other thing I need, which I don't have right with me, I'll have to get one, is I need a Band-Aid because uh, IMs a lot of times will bleed. Once you give an IM injection, the patient will bleed because you're going deeper now in the muscle. Put my gloves on before I stick the patient and lay this down because it's covered. Don't be laying that needle down without it being covered because then you've contaminated. I've got it, I'm ready to go. And the patient wants it in the deltoid, we're gonna give it in the deltoid. I'm gonna find the chromium process, third finger down right in the middle and take the cap off. And then this time, instead of pinching like I did with the insulin, I'm gonna pull that muscle real taut. I'm gonna stretch it and hold it tight with my fingers, okay? So th this time I won't be pinching up, I'll be holding it tight. I'm going in at a 90 degree angle and you wanna give a little dart like, don't go in slow with the needle because that makes it hurt worse. Actually, if you'll get close and just dart it like that, then you can let go of these fingers, you can pull back on this plunger to aspirate, make sure there's no blood. Then I go back and hold it taut again and I slowly and continuously uh, inject my medicine, hold it there for a couple of seconds, then out it comes, and right away I got my, I put a little pressure with my, uh, either a gauze or my alcohol swab, if that's all I have, and hold that pressure for just a minute, and then put a Band-Aid over it when I'm done, okay? And then of course I'm gonna document, uh, oh, before I do that though, I'm gonna, you see this guard, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna push it up until it locks, and that guards that needle to where I won't stick myself, and then it goes to the sharp spots. Then I'm gonna document, what I gave, I'm gonna document my assessment, I'm gonna document the pain scale, I'm gonna document the respirations, and I'm also gonna document the site I gave it in so that the next time they may need pain medicine, I can um, know that not to go in that same site because it can get, uh, make it kind of not, that muscle knot up if you give it too often in that site. The other thing you wanna to do too as well is with an IM injection, I'll come back probably about 15, 20 minutes, and I'm gonna see if it's effective. If I was given a peel, I'm gonna check for effectiveness in about an hour. If I was given sub-Q, uh, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. If I was given the same medicine, IV, then I could check them within just a few minutes, less than 10 probably, because it's gonna take effect right away. So with the IM, once again, anywhere up 20, 30 minutes, you wanna come back, you wanna evaluate how effective the medication is.